good evening everyone i'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting for december 16 2019 <laughs> at 7 p.m miss Berner, if you call roll please mayor lowry here councilman chammy here councilwoman hopkins here councilwoman eggleston here councilman cobb here councilman cook here vice mayor lindsay <coughs> seven members present thank you ma'am and if you'll stand tonight's invocation will be by vice mayor lindsay Head, please. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you once more, Father, this evening to ask for your blessings upon this council, this city, and our citizens, Lord. Father, as we enter into the Christmas holidays, Lord, we know that your son is the reason for this season, and we pray that every heart will be touched by the Christmas spirit this year, Lord. Father, we ask you to look after, look over our administration our police department our fire department keep them safe as they do their jobs uh and the road crews as long while they're out there doing the snow removal in jesus name we pray amen pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all All right, we'll need uh, action on the action on the uh, meeting for 120219. So moved. Second. Mr. Shammy. So is the second? I think he was first. Mr. Okay. Cobb was second. Okay. Councilman Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Minutes accepted 7-0. Thank you very much. All right, we'll go next into uh, communications. Tonight, uh, Team Aerobots of the first LEGO League from Tecumseh uh, Local is here. I'm really excited to have you guys here tonight because I know a little bit about what you do, but not a lot. And I figured what not better place to uh, educate everybody about it here at the Nucleus City Council meeting. So uh, again, you guys, uh, you've got a table, you've got a mic here. There's a lot of you, parents need to speak. We'll just you know, kind of line up behind the table and kind of rotate whoever needs to talk at that time, and uh, the floor is yours. And all the children sit there. I don't want to go up there. Come to the local schools. They're mostly oh, elementary. Oh, oh, oh. If you guys need uh, Tar Parker, you guys can move that table up if you need. Okay. I'm Parker Carnes from New Cal Isle. I am Gavin Brascone from uh, Donaldsville. I'm Micah Sharbaugh from the Crow. I'm Sarah Kottmeyer from Bethel Township. I'm Michaela Sharbaugh from the Crow. We are the Aerobots, a group of fifth and sixth grade students who all attended either New Cal Isle Elementary or Tecumseh Middle School. We were invited to join this new robotics team this year. We, com we compete in the first LEGO League, which is for students age 9 through 14. And it is organized out of the STEM office at Wright Pat. There are two main parts to our team com competition. We build, a, we build and code a robot to complete various missions on a competition board and we identify a problem and develop a solution for it. We re received the Champions Award at our first qualifying competition, meaning we were the best all-around team at the event. We compete at Wright State in January against over 30 other teams. This year, the theme for the competition is City Shaper. The competition board for the robot looks like a city with a bridge, park, traffic jam, etc. We had to design and code a robot that could complete tasks on the city themed board. I'll talk more about our robot in a little bit. Our task for the innovation project was to identify a problem with a building or public space in our community and make a solution. We did a lot of brainstorming about needs in our community. Three things we came up with. Th that we wanted to provide and 
we wanted to provide an, a, an emergency homeless shelter for in times of really bad weather. We also wanted a free clothing closet to help our community. We also thought about ways to make our community more inclusive for people with various physical handicaps. We eventually decided to design a community center where all of these needs could be met. As we were working to design our center, we did a quite we did quite a bit of research. Two of our coaches asked friends on Facebook for what they would like to have in a community center. They got lots of good ideas from people in the community. We toured a clothing closet in Huber Heights. We also emailed back and forth with a community center in Xenia. We talked with family youth initiatives about what they, already, what they are already doing in our community and what still needs to be done. We talked with Mike Lowry about what a center like this might look like in New Carlisle. We met with a lady who has designed buildings for various companies. We also made a video describing our plan to share on Facebook and ask for feedback from our community. Here's the plan that we came up with. It, we, include, we included classrooms, both large and small, where a variety of classes, support groups, clubs, and meetings could be held. We included a gym for rec basketball leagues and a locker room. This area would allow the center to be used as an emergency homeless shelter. We put a walking track around the upper level of the gym. We had a, a large area for a clothing closet with rooms to store and sort the clothes, to display the clothes on racks and wash the clothes if necessary. We have two areas with qu kitchen equipment, one near the large classroom and one near the gym. This would be helpful for cooking classes or when either the classroom or the gym are used for private rentals. We have spaces for kids, including an indoor and outdoor playground. We would like some equipment in these spaces to be designed to be inclusive of kids with physical handicaps. The lobby is designed to have an area where people could find out well, about all the events happening in the community and all the assistance that is available. <coughs> we would also like to have a community garden and produce stand. We wanted to point out that our center is one story except for the walking track. We didn't include a pool because our area already has two great pools. We want to provide some translation help at our center and potentially offer rides to Springfield. We were mainly motivated by a desire to bring the community together to meet physical needs. One location that was suggested was the field just north of Meadowview. We liked that location because it was close to the walking or by back bike path and easy to get to. We talked to someone who works in construction and he gave us a cost estimate of five to seven million dollars without the cost of the land. The feedback we've gotten so far is that our plan sounds great, but we are sure there are ways that we can make it better. Um, we would like to ask you all some questions as we try to make our plan better. Some is, do you agree with our cost estimate? With your cost, would you say? Um, do you agree with our cost estimate for our building plan? I will, you know what, I'm going to pass that to our service director, Mr. Kitko, because he has more experience in that area. What do you think, Mr. Kitko? A cost estimate for the uh, item you have listed there? Yeah. Five to six million? <laughs> um, how many, do you know how many square foot it is? No. I, 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 no, I do not know. Is there a, um, probably somewhere between three and five. Three to five? Okay. Uh, I think it's seven feet per square. <coughs> seven feet per square. It's not. Not square. Oh, okay. oh, never mind. We had good paper. Never mind. Okay. No um, problem. Next question. Um, do you like our? Do you like the proposed location? We we'll go down the line here. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we had to remove something for cost, what would you remove? Ooh, that's a tricky one. <clears throat> Instead of removing something, I think you should raise more money. Okay. I would, if I was going to pick something, I would say the community garden because we've got one in place already, so you okay. could save some money there. Okay. Uh, no. No, no pool. We didn't want a pool because there's two great pools in New Carlisle. Okay. Um, is there anything that you've heard people ask for that we didn't include? Um, 
I don't know if you, I don't know if you can put it there, maybe on some of your green space outside the building. And we've got a lot of parks in town, but we've heard people say a, a uh, dog park. Okay. So I don't, you know, depending on the size of your land, yeah. possibly. Number seven. Instead of, the, instead yeah. of the community garden, you put a dog park right, right there. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Is there, um, do you think that something like this is possible in New Carlisle someday? Anything's possible with some hard work behind it. Anything's possible. We understand that mon that the money necessary is a big problem. If the city was going to do something like this, how would they go about getting it funded? Wow. Grants. 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 Our city, <laughs> between, yeah, between, between the city manager and our service director and our finance director, they've done great with getting grants. I don't know if grants are available for things like that, but they, they get pretty creative sometimes. So that would probably be our first step into looking into it. There, there's federal grants out there for almost anything you want to do. Okay. So that would be something that you need to research. Okay. Um, do you have any questions for us? Mr. Mayor. Sir. How old are you guys and young ladies? And what grade are you in? Uh, fifth and sixth. And we're fifth, 11 to 12 six. to 10. Fifth and sixth grade is 11 and 12. Wow. That's absolutely awesome. And how, how many, I'm assuming the whole team's not here, correct? So how many is in the team? We have 10, 10 people, people on our team. Okay. We have uh, five not here. Four sixth graders and um, six, six um, fifth graders. Okay. Parker, could you pass the uh, board you've got down? Uh, yeah, I just, I just want to see it up close, so if you don't mind passing it <coughs> Yeah, my next question was going to be, without getting too excited, are you guys going to play with those robots? That's what's going to happen. Next. All right. <laughs> and who are your coaches? Those two. Yeah, do you want to introduce, you want to introduce, you want to introduce your coaches? the coaches and the parents? Are they your parents? Okay. okay. Great. All right, guys, when you're ready, back to you. Sorry, I have to talk more. No problem. Um, <laughs> so here is Murphy and, uh, and Small Fry. They are robots built with Lego's EV3 Mindstorms. Our team creates programs that use these robots' sensors and motors to complete tasks. In the first Lego League competition, these tasks are called missions. The missions are worth points that are totaled against other teams' points at the competition. We are currently able to complete four out of the 12 missions, which actually doesn't, it doesn't sound good, but for a first year team, three is a lot during our contest. We are hoping to complete more at the next contest in January. We are judged by the missions that we are able to complete and also by the design of our robot. We design the robot <coughs> by strategically placing the sensors and motors to complete the tasks. We had to write programs in the EV3 software that gets loaded to the robot's brick. This is the brick right here. It's, the, it's kind of like the brain of it. It controls everything. Um, and we test each program several times as we are developing them. This robot has two color sensors right here and right here and a gyro sensor, which is here. The color sensors are used to follow lines on the game table and detect <coughs> locations. The gyro sensor is used to detect the movement and help the robot turn accurately. We are currently improving the stability of the wheels so that our robot will be more reliable for the upcoming competition. Notice the bracing on the sides of each wheel here. This is the robot that we are not using in the competition. This is the robot that we use in the competition. Here's a small program that I wrote right here that we're going to show. The robot will move forward, turn around 180 degrees, and come back the same distance. It will then turn around several times and make a noise. You can't 
can't hear the noise, but it, <laughs> the it, wheels are really loud. It did. Um, so, so the thing that we're trying to fix with these braces are is how the motors, because um, our wheels can move like this without the, the motors actually doing anything. So when we try to line it up, it could just turn as soon as it takes off, and then that messes up everything. So, and um, so it's it's really hard to get the wheels to, to be as stable as possible. Does anybody want to see the robot? Do you guys want to see the robot if you pass it around? Both of them? Start with them. Oh, yeah. To complete these missions that they've had to choose which ones to do based on the point that they gave us two and a half So, this is the first year for this league at Thompson, correct? It is. It's considered Thompson League? Well, anyone can start a team. Okay. So we didn't necessarily go to the school, but all the kids do come up with the But it's not fun to It's not fun to do How is it fun to do Similar, pretty comparable to like a, like a sports team. Okay. So, so you guys go. It was a fairly, fairly cost attainable thing to do considering what the kids were able to do. So you guys go with donations and sponsorships if possible? We didn't go that route this year, but that's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> Excellent idea. <laughs> Would you like to see the code for this yep. thing that we just did as well? And you guys have two robots? Each team has two robots? Well, we actually have more, but... Uh... <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, each team, they have the same equipment, and then they construct them to do... Yeah, each team uh, has one program that they purchase when they sign up, and then got some additional ones to help them throughout the season to make a split up. Okay. We kind of found out after we got started that not every team really uses the maximum of 10 kids. We did, and it I think it helped them learn to work as a team, but we also kind of needed yeah, yeah. more robots so that they could all involved in the coding process. If you don't mind me asking, um, go back to you. You said you won your first uh, ch championship. Mm -hmm. What did that entail again? If you said it, I apologize. Just go over that again one more time. I mean, what, what, what made you be the winner of that? What, what did you have to do? Well, we, uh, there was, we have four values that on our shirts. We got judged by how well we did our four values. And we had a uh, presentation that we did. And that, that was, it's, every game is like 25%. And then we had the robot, the robot game. We placed fifth in the robot game. So we, we did not think that we were going to be first place because they didn't pass our words. The last word was championship. I, we had a video of it, and a bunch of people were just shaking their heads and looking down. There was the robot design too, which that that was part of the um, that was part of the twenty five percent. We had a we have a presentation on that that we gave, um, and it's just judged on how effective the design of our robot is and how creative it is if we're not just doing. We, uh, the presentation Parker was talking about is our innovative pre presentation. It's what the blueprint, the poster board we had, right here. That's um, what we proposed for the, um, uh, we had to find a solution to a problem in our community. That was our proposed solution. So, and we, we uh, had a presentation about that to our judges, which was actually a skit. Okay. Now, your core values, is that something that's different from everybody? Each team comes up with their own? Uh, the core values are given, but um, you don't, they, they for, so they, the, the judges just met us in, the, in like this place where we were getting ready for the next thing. And so they just met us and talked to us. And um, so, so they recommended like a board of like a core values poster. We did our shirts. So, um, what? We have a board there. Yeah, we had we had a board about our um, 
our innovation project, but not our core values. Yeah, we had one for our he core did. values, too. Okay. And <laughs> you, you don't have to have shirts, but they're also recommended. So we did a sweatshirt because it's the winter season. And we decided to put our core values on there for like a little extra point. There you go. Good idea. You've got to work the system, right? And we are judged on how well we show these core values, okay. how we show that we use. Teamwork, inclusion, fun, discovery, teamwork, impact. Teamwork, fun. innovation, fun, impact, discovery, and, and, and inclusion. So there's ten of you in your in your group, correct? Mm -hmm. In your team, huh? does all ten of you get along all the time? Mostly. <laughs> well, the girls are saying yes. The boys are. <laughs> We're friends, so but we, yeah. Okay. Fair answer. Yeah. Okay, so one uh, one more question for me. With just the group that's here, and what kind of a, a class or group or league this is? I mean, what, down the line, if you don't mind, what do you guys? What do you want to do when you grow up, Parker? Pilot. Pilot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I I I don't know. Don't rush. I don't know. You got plenty of time. I was just <laughs> I'm rush. just curious if it would tie to this somehow. Uh, I want to be a lawyer. Okay. I, I want to be a vet. So does my daughter. I want to be a teacher. Very good. So, all right. Well, anything else, council, administration, audience? Got any questions for them while they're here? No. All right, guys. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you guys don't mind. Take your guys' hands if you don't mind. Jump back into the boring part of the meeting in comparison to what you guys just presented us. Uh, you're welcome to stay, but I'm sure you don't want to. So, um, whenever you guys are ready, you're welcome to head on out or stay if you like. But thank you again for coming. We appreciate it. Alrighty, we will jump down to the city manager's report, Mr. Pitko. Thank you, Mayor Lowry. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, we will jump down to uh, a finance report. Uh, Ms. Watson, please. Good evening, Council and uh, residents. Merry Christmas. Uh, this is their financial report summary for November. Uh, November's total revenue of the general fund was $9,037.83. November's total expenses were $61,409.17. Uh, with the income tax withholding account uh, revenue for November coming in at $115,590.63. Year to date, our total revenue collected is $5,726,721.27. And year to date, total expenses is $4,805,592.34. Right. Council, any questions for Ms. Watson? Yeah. Thank you for the report, ma'am. We appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Watson. Um, moving on down to B, that is my part, uh, under service discussion. Under our service departments, we've uh, uh, had this on for some time, completed minor road repairs in areas, and we still have some more work to do with those. Uh, storm, on, storm drains on Main Street, we have uh, discussed those in a work session, and um, figuring out the, the direction we're gonna go to get those repaired. Uh, leaf pickup season is coming to a close for curbside pickup. 
Uh, section D, which is our southeast, will be the last curbside collection during this week of December 16th. All other leads will need to be taken to the old school at 600 West Madison Street uh, until December 24th. Also, leads may be put in your uh, trash toter and uh, do not use your recycling toters um, for leads. Moving on down to the 2019 wastewater plant and influent building upgrade, uh, Peterson Construction was awarded the contract. The equipment is on site and is being installed. Uh, startup is tentatively scheduled for this week, December 18th and 19th. And I got to tell you, it is kind of nice seeing um, this new age uh, equipment sitting there, which is all stainless compared to the 40 year equipment that's sitting there that's all rotting and uh, it's just old steel. <coughs> so it was definitely appreciative and it will definitely help the rest of our plant with its treatment process. 2019-2020 uh, primary number one clarifier project. As you are aware, we had a prime, uh, clarifier that the lattice structure down in the clarifier had caught something and it had twisted it up pretty good. So we have sent the first down payment um, to get our submittal drawings for that clarifier. We have reviewed those and sent those back to the contractor and the manufacturer. So we are just waiting for them to make some final adjustments on our current measurements and we will keep moving on with that. I don't have it on here, but I think we're scheduled for about an April install. Traffic signal upgrade project. Uh, we will be, uh, the pro well the project was awarded to Banzel Construction and that is to replace the main and lake and main and 571 traffic signals along with uh, pedestrian lights. Those will be LED, somewhat decorative, and will basically be upgraded to help us save cost. Um, that was a 100% um, CMAC funds, which is congestion mitigation air quality. The signals will communicate with each other. Um, so basically it was a 100% federal uh, funded project. Uh, construction is to be completed by 831 of 20. Um, it is definitely to be obviously be done before the heritage flight. And as I get any more updates, I will pass those along and I can entertain any questions on the report or anything not on the report, I can answer, try to answer those. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Mr. Shannon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Kitko, I got just three questions. Okay. Well, actually two, but uh, about the LED lighting, I did go through Huber and it's, it's completely like really different than your, the standard lighting like we have. Mm -hmm. It's a lot cleaner. You can see down the road at night. It's, it's, it's pretty impressed. So. Um, Second, or first question, you mentioned about getting the, some major road repairs. Are we still working on the repairs for, from the uh, garbage truck? Yes, that is part of that, like up on Church Street, um, some other areas, yeah, where they get closer to curb air on uh, West Washington. We have one on Henry. Yeah, we have a couple of those out there that we got to get to. <coughs> some <Scott> Street. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we fixed one on Scott Street, the long stretch. I can think it's not close to you. No, it's not me. No, no, but is it down in that area? Because I think we fixed one up on North Scott. Yeah. Gotcha. So we got a South Scott one? Yeah. Okay. Also, um, I don't know how people feel about the lead pickup, but I think it's kind of too early. Am I the only one that thinks that? Too early to do it? To pick it up like the first run, like maybe back it up a couple weeks. What's the first run? The first run is actually mid-November. I'm sorry, late October, early November. Basically, the first run gets us out there with getting the equipment going and stuff like that. And we know, we, we thought about trying to cut it down to one pickup and just make it solid. Um, but then weather, rain, the whole nine yards. Yeah. To add on to that, and this is probably uh, kind of mess with your question a little bit. We are looking at the future for 2020 and its leaf pickup. And we are running out of places to dump leaves. Um, everybody thinks they'd be able to take some leaves, but we're pulling all them. I mean, we have probably 50 some loads of cubic box leaves that are all ground up. Um, some businesses may not be taking them due to future um, uh, where they may be. Um, we have been starting to ask around. So leaf pickup may be the scenery of how it's done, maybe changing anyway, because uh, we're losing. I mean, we've delivered some to the community garden. We've delivered some to the golf course. We and, and the businesses who have been taking them for years, if they go out, we just don't know what we're going to do with them. <laughs> I'm sorry? Yeah, that's what they do is just so much. Like, we couldn't have our own comp comp composting pile. 
just don't have enough room. Right. Okay. Thank you. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, we've been taking to the garden. It's just to have that much. As, uh, but, yeah, that hopefully I didn't. Uh, well, no, I, I just think you know, the first time uh, the guys came around, there was probably not even. It's not very busy during that time. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you. I'll look, definitely look into that. Any other questions for Mr. Kitka, Mr. Vice Mayor? Speaking of leaves, I think there's still a few piles on Henry. I, I, I see some people have got them covered up the tarps or the window blown away. Um, I haven't been out to Henry to check, but those are still out there today? I, I, I can't swear today. Because I thought we got them out last way. week. Uh, they are still there. <laughs> I think there's some right down the street from me. They're in the curb. Yes, yeah, so are they still there? I think the lady just put them out there over the weekend. Well, when we had that windstorm, they got all blown in between the two houses, and basically that chain link fence caught it for them. So yeah. It was halfway up the chain link fence. Because we did get some tarp leaves. So if they brought them back out there later, we usually do a little um, pick up some scragglers. Tarp leaves may be gone because it's at uh, I had a call for those. one of the firefighters out there. Yes, I had a call for that, and we, I think we rectified that. Okay. But I know there's other piles there in the curb, mm -hmm. uh, like a little cul-de-sac, and then I think on down Henry, I think there's two or three, too. Yeah, I think that section's done, but we'll probably go around and pick up scragglers. That's why I was trying to put it out that once your section's done, you, you know, it saves us a lot of time trying to go back out later to do the whole city again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kidco, um, are we planning on doing a uh, run down through the downtown area? I noticed that we've got quite a few leaves on the first section of, of the curbing in the downtown area and on the sidewalk. It gets two, sometimes maybe three pickups like everybody else, but we know that that's like a tunnel in there and leaves constantly blow in there from everywhere. So they put the small piles. I'm sure we'll be hitting it again. Okay. Thank you, Mr. But I'll draw a note. <laughs> uh, this may be a stupid question. Is, are we responsible for replacing curbs? Negative. That is a pro uh, um, responsibility of the homeowner. Okay. Unless we do a federal state project and it's included in it, like um, Prentice, all those, those are all federal projects. <laughs> They'll get taken it done as a whole. Okay. Um, but we have looked in the past, not too, uh, it's been pretty recent past, to, um, there's a trend to do these projects, because concrete is your expensive part of that, a lot of that job, and to share the cost of the rebuilding of the curb, because um, typically the municipality paid for the road when it was a very first time put in, so in the 50s in Northwoods, and then they put the maintenance on when you go to the ORC. They put the maintenance on the homeowner. Anything blacktop then is the city. Okay. So, but a, some municipalities are going to assess the property owners during the project, saying we'll take care of everything, digging it out, all that stuff. All you got to do is pay for the concrete curb to go back in. Okay. Some is a hundred, some is shared. <coughs> okay. I just noticed that the okay. curb in front of the Methodist Church is. It's been it's been brought up numerous times, and um, I've actually spoke with the pastor many times and talked about types of, you know, what to do, or if we got a, you got a big group of people who want to go together, 10 property owners there, and said, hey, can we get one contractor? I mean, you know, trying to assist with a local contractor that could bring up a good price for everybody to do it together. Okay. The other thing with those two, those curbs are, they're also, it's called monolithic. They were poured with the original concrete base on it, because Main Street has anywhere from seven to 12 inches of concrete underneath, and it was poured as one. So a lot of times it's a, it's a nightmare for them to go down and saw cut all the way through there and um, put that full curb and gutter back in. Or they may just cut that out and put what they call barrier curb, which is usually just the round part you see, and they'll just bury it some. Okay. So there's just a couple different options, but typically it's re responsibility of the homeowner. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Eagles. Okay. Anyone else? All right. And back to you, Mr. Kitko. Thank you. Moving on down to item C, fire report. Uh, Chief Trustee, if you would, please. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, and citizens. In the month of November, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 63 EMS calls in the city, eight in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 12 fire-related calls in the city, and eight and zero in Elizabeth Township. 
We had four EMS calls answered by mutual aid by Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered one mutual aid uh, EMS call for Pike Township and two mutual aid calls for Bethel Clark. The, in the month of November, the division responded to two overdose calls. Uh, as of right now, the city has responded to 1,155 calls and Elizabeth Township has responded to 186 calls. Uh, the past month, month and a half, the department's been <coughs> tremendously busy in between auto accidents, uh, two, ha two major structure fires that we responded mutually to uh, Bethel Park and several accidents and we've had eight full arrests in the, in the city in the past 35 days. Council, any uh, questions or comments for Chief? Thank you very much, Chief. And again, uh, big thanks and congratulations to your team for that fire on 40. I mean, I know it was a terrible loss for them, but uh, this, you know, the story of you going the extra mile and going in and maybe not Christmas. And, and yeah, and you know, it, it made their uh, their you know made a bad situation a little bit better at least. So thank you very much, and please uh, tell everyone congratulations and keep up the good work. All right, thank you, Fire Chief. Uh, moving on, um, Deputy, you want to give the report? Sure. Um, Deputy Major Sack is uh, standing in, and he will give you your police report. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, citizens, thank you. Uh, Sergeant Underwood, I apologize for his absence tonight. Something that come up he wasn't able to get away from, so he asked me to fill in. Uh, the report that he put together for October 2019 is uh, we responded to 36 uh, calls. Uh, of those calls, two of those were domestics, three thefts, uh, two non-injury crashes, uh, a citation was issued, three drug complaints, three overdoses, and three suicide attempts. He wanted me to pass on that the New Carlisle has been a busy month working with the Clark County Sheriff's Office detectives and the ACE Drug Task Force making arrests on some of our serious, more serious drug dealers. Working together, they were able to apprehend and incarcerate one of the largest drug dealers in Clark County. There were several others arrested and more still to, under investigation. And uh, he also put in here that sometimes while working with drug task force, you need special encrypted radios, uh, channels, so that the public cannot monitor them. And New Carlisle has four radios that are purchased. Um, the county, at an expense of $1,800 per radio, is going to put those encrypted channels in our radios at no cost to the city. Uh, so that so that we have those channels that we can go to to listen to what uh, what else is going on. We use those for uh, to clear the channel if we're going to do a warrant service or something like that. We can go to those channels and just communicate so we all knows. Uh, that's what we use those for. So it, that's greatly appreciated. Uh, it's the traffic citations are down right now, but stops have increased. Uh, more citations are going to be issued in the following weeks. And it says that we're starting to get more break-ins, car break-in complaints, which we are. Uh, not, a, not a bunch of them, but more of the uh, rummaging people are starting to. It's getting colder out, so people are starting to get in the cars looking for change, stuff like that, that they're trying to um, get this to keep warmer just to buy something. So just be diligent and look out for your neighbors and ask them to look out for you as well. Anything that you see, give us a call and we'll absolutely respond. And uh, that's going to conclude um, his uh, report for this month. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Council, any questions or comments? <coughs> Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Evening, Deputy. Sure. The, uh, the radios, was that just in the portable radios that you guys carry, or is that also in the cars? Yeah, no, it would be just in the in the portable radios the that portable. we have. Yeah, it would be attack one and attack two and attack three channels, I believe, is what they're going to put in there. Okay. Has that been done already? Uh, it's been done to one of the radios, and the other three will be done. Do you know when those will be uh, accomplished? Um, they took all the radios on Monday. To the office and, and had looked at them so i would i would like to think that that i can't speak for that but i would i would think that it'd be relatively soon probably before years end since they asked for all the radios because they wanted to look at them and get those numbers sir do you know anything about it? i just know it's supposed to happen asap okay, okay. who services the radios uh, pnr communications or somebody else do they still i think pnr still i believe pnr does do it yes okay thank you yes council any questions or comments before we move on <coughs> Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. All right. Anything else for staff before I move down to informational items? No, sir. 
All right. Um, I don't have much of an update. I'm not uh, up with uh, Mr. Bridge on his new building update. Um, if you have any questions with that, I could probably take those back to him or we can hold off until the um, uh, mm -hmm. next meeting. Yeah. That's okay with council? Yeah, I believe so. All right, uh, 2020 operating budget. Um, adoption on 3920 or 32320, uh, preferably aiming for the 3920. Uh, we'll be probably setting work sessions uh, to begin in late January, early February. New playground equipment, and that was attached in your packet. There's some uh, swing sets, and um, I believe there's an attachment to one of the swing sets. I'm not fully um, aware of what all is included. I know Mr. Bridge has been taking care of this. But the cost breakdown, the total investment was $11,654. The grant portion was $2,925, which was 25%. And the city funded $8,729, uh, which is um, 75%. Oh, and here's an asterisk. It includes swing set frames, two swings, one swing along, excuse me, wood fiber safety surfacing, border timbers, and installation. And as a matter of fact, the gentleman was here today to start, but we, oops, had not completed their markings out here because we do have electric in there. So I think he's coming back towards the later part of this week then this will be installed. Great. Seems like a lot of stuff gets installed in December. <laughs> uh, moving on to uh, Deputy Sheriff Equipment and Depreciation List. That was attached in your packet also. There's a list of items in there all the way from police cruisers down to the cameras that they carry, audio recorders, tasers, hang basically anything that's on them, the car, or equipment that we might um, have uh, at the substation. Okay. So um, I could try to answer any questions, but if you uh, have any, we can, I can pass those on to Mr. Bridge. Council, any questions on this matter? Thank you. All right. Still moving on to utility bills. Uh, we had discussed this in the work session earlier this evening about uh, changing um, from the current uh, postcard style water bills that we have to move into the trifold papers that go in an envelope. This would be a uh, contracted out item that would be done. And in your packet, you know, we had discussed at the work session, there's a utility bill cost comparison. Down to the very last nut and bolt is the estimate for the cost to do this would just be an increase of $105 a month, oh, $105.07 per month, or approximately $1,261 per year increase to get away from those postcards. And in the work session, we discussed that one, the postcards can be lost. Uh, two, there's not very much uh, room for information on that postcard, it's very small. Um, the concern of privacy uh, came up from citizens that uh, you know someone might get your bill and wonder why you use 50,000 gallons and whatever, you know? So there's a couple different um, things that council, I think, and uh, staff has looked at. Uh, for possibly eliminating the machines um, that we have to use for those bills and uh, maintenance agreements we have on those machines uh, to get down to that uh, final yearly cost. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, attached also is the rules of council. They're attached for your review. They will be introduced as resolution at the January 21st, 2020 regular meeting. Please note that the meeting day is on Tuesday because Martin Luther King Day falls on that Monday. So our council meeting will be 1-21-20. Okay. And that, Mayor, is all I have. Let me verify here under the city manager's report. Thank you very much. Council, any more questions for Mr. Kitko before we move on? Okay. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. All right, let's see some reports. Comments from members of the public. If anybody has any questions or comments, please go to the podium, give us your name and address, and you will have five minutes. All right, moving on. Committee reports, none tonight. We'll drop down to resolutions for two for uh, action tonight. Ms. Burner. All right, we have resolution 19 20, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the general fund to the swimming pool fund and debt services funds of the city of New Carlisle. 
Council. So moved. Hang on. Second. First, and Mr. Cook was second. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, this resolution, 19-20R, was um, having a transfer out of the general fund of $207,000, $207,662. The enterprise fund of the swimming pool, which was budgeted earlier in the year, this is the actual official legislation to do that $40,000 transfer into the swimming pool fund. And then a transfer in to the, our two debt service funds, which is our general obligation debt and our Twin Creeks infrastructure. Um, and those are all totaling up $207,662. Council, any questions or comments? Mr. Berner, when you're ready, please. Okay. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Motion accepted, 7-0. And moving on when you're ready, please. Resolution 19-21, a resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the water fund to the general fund of the city of New Carlisle. Council. So moved. Vice Mayor and Jim. And an explanation of this resolution is um, we had the Scarf Road um, water tower re uh, surface painting um, project rehabilitation. The general fund paid the very first annual payment of that seven year um, payment plan. And then the, the, le there was legislation passed for the water department to pay back those four. And then the water department will continue paying on year two through year seven. And this was a transfer out of the water operating capital of $28,875 which would then go into the general fund for repayment of that same $28,875. Thank you. Council, any questions or comments? When you're ready. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted 7-0. Moving on to our ordinances. Ordinance 19-44, public hearing and action tonight. <coughs> An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the Clark County Sheriff's Office for fire and EMS dispatching services. So moved. Second. Hopkins and Shammy. Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor. And an explanation of this ordinance is to provide the city of New Carlisle with fire and EMS dispatching services. This will come to a, this contract will be a decrease from last year of approximately $454 with a 2020 total cost of $19,830 and 30 cents. Uh, the payments will be made February 1 of $9,915 and 15 cents. And then that other payment will be made on August 1st, 2020. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions or comments? And when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. Moving on to Ordinance 19 45, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for city employee health insurance. So moved. Second. Second. Shammy Eggleston? Sure. Okay. Those <laughs> are the two voices I heard. It was a tie. Who was the second? Uh, and an explanation of this ordinance is um, the city for any and all um, uh, full-time employees or anyone eligible for health insurance uh, to cover them. This cost is at $325,063 for all currently enrolled employees. This is a 16.6% increase over the premium last year. Um, we, earlier this uh, season, when well, I say season, summertime or fall, we had sent out for estimates and quotes and actually was able to work with them a little bit because I think it was originally in the mid-20s. Mm -hmm. So it, um, we did work on that and that is the cost. Council, any questions? When you're 
you're ready, please. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Chammy? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Motion accepted, 7-0. Moving on, ordinance 19-46, an ordinance <coughs> authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of water softening rock. Salt. There's, salt. No, There's no salt. <coughs> All right, water, uh, water softening, softening <laughs> rock, salt. We just want That's the rock. not there. The salt <laughs> I know, that's part. I was. We did second we did. this <laughs> together oh. again, so it's my yeah, turn. It's her turn. <coughs> Who was the first? Mr. Lindsay. All right, and the second? Okay. Is that okay with you? All right, an explanation of this ordinance is uh, the city bids out for its softening salt for the use in the water treatment facility for a whole year. This is for 2020. We had two bids come back, one from Cargill, one from Morton. Morton was um, basically they're not interested at this time. Cargill came back with $130.41 per ton, and that will be our cost for the whole season of 2020. Council, any questions? And when you're ready, Ms. Burner. All right. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Chandy? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Motion accepted 7-0. Moving on to ordinance 19-47, an ordinance amending section 248 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding city policy. Second. Shami Eggleston. Mm -hmm. An explanation of this ordinance is in section 248 of our codified ordinances um, where New Carlisle addresses various city policies. This fixed asset policy and procedures, which is attached to that exhibit A, um, describes the things that we're required to main, uh, maintain, monitor, keep on record. Could be vehicles, could be finance system, it could be basically anything. They want to know what you have in fixed assets. Um, this has never been, it's been in force since 1997 and amended in 2011, but it was never codified into the city of New Carlisle codified ordinances, and this will do just that. Thank you. Council. Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Mr. Kiko, this will also uh, keep us from getting dinged on the audits, on the state audits now also, by this being codified? That's not all we're being. Um, well, I understand that, but this, this will, is one the, of the things that we keep getting hit on. Yeah, but part of that was making sure we evaluated the assets and having all the numbers and what everything's worth and, and that type of stuff. This is just putting it, you know, into our codified ordinances how to do that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Council, any other questions? All right. When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Okay. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Chammy. Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Motion accepted 7-0. Thank you. Ordinance 19-49, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the Sheriff of Clark County, Ohio for police protection within the city limits of New Carlisle, Ohio. Second. Shammy um, Hopkins. Okay. Okay, an explanation of this ordinance, uh, and there are two ordinances on tonight for various ways that um, there could be police protection. This one in particular is to contract for five deputies, and that would be at a cost of $553,372.75, and that's basically a total cost per deputy times five deputies, and then there's a council meeting fee. I do believe that the total fee is what, if we had um, full deputies, family plan, basically the max cost deputy that you could potentially have on, the, on their pay scale and fringe benefit scale. This cost does not include um, the possibility of a purchase of a new car, or it does not cover the cost of the lease vehicle that is not in here. If we were to lease a sheriff cruiser from Clark County Sheriff's Office. Council, any questions or comments on this one? 
Are you ready, please? Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Absolutely. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Chammy? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. Ordinance 19-50, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the sheriff of Clark County, Ohio for police protection within the city limits of New Carlisle, Ohio. So moved. Fail it. We want to withdraw that. Or where we did it once. Oh, okay. Withdraw that. <laughs> withdraw your motion. Withdraw. I thought it, it shouldn't die, should it? It can either die due to a lack of motion or oh. they bring it to the table and go through the discussion about whatever they want to do with it. He can die from lack of motion. He can. Okay, so he withdraws his motion. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me which way it went. Is that okay with you? Okay. So. Because you already kind of picked one. Right. Right. Okay. All right. We're moving on to ordinance. 19-51E, an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations in New Carlisle City Ordinance 19-04 and declaring an emergency. So moved. Second. Ms. Eggleston. An explanation of this ordinance is for the swimming pool fund. Uh, the budget is approved not as each, like swimming pool is the bottom dollar for the swimming pool, but it's basically your wages, benefits, it's approved at that level, then your maintenance at that level. Um, so this adjusts the monies that are already there to increase the wages by 6000 excuse me, Medicare by $50, and OPRS by $250. So it's moving money within that small part of the swimming pool fund. Council, any questions on this one? And when you're ready, Ms. Byrne. Okay. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Chammy. Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Motion accepted. So <coughs> zero. Ordinance 19 dash. 52E, an ordinance establishing temporary appropriations for fiscal year 2020 and declaring an emergency. So moved. Second. Mr. Chammy. Okay. And an explanation of this ordinance is to allow the city to proceed with um, being able to expend funds uh, for the year 2020 until we pass our permanent budget which is due by the um, March 31st. Council, any questions? And when you're ready, Ms. Berner, please. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Chammy. Yes. Motion accepted, 7-0. Ordinance 19-53, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 1620. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for professional accounting and consulting services. Thank you. Other business? Yes, please. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2.00. The city offices will be closed Friday, December 20th at noon for the employee Christmas party. They will be closed Tuesday, December 24th for Christmas Eve, Wednesday, December 25th for Christmas Eve, and closed Wednesday, January 1st for New Year's Day. Thank you very much. All right, with that being said, that is about it. Um, does anybody else have anything? Mr. Stanley. Well, I just want to say thank you. Uh, yeah. It's been a wild ride the last year. He sends it, he sends it out every, every month. Wish I could stick around. But I do want to bring something to uh, the attention uh, that I found out. <coughs> <coughs> this may have been a line. Sure. 
I'd like to take the opportunity to discuss with the council about an issue regarding a certain council member not paying their taxes and was found guilty by a court of law. Under the city charter of Fort uh, dot zero eight section B three, this is clearly misconduct that would cause forfeiture of office. You see, last year, this council wanted to remove the sitting mayor for non-payment of his taxes, but through investigation that uh, they had been paid, but the paperwork was not filed. Uh, I recall a few council members, uh, future and past, or, sorry, past and present, as well as our past law director wanted to remove the mayor and to have a hearing to push the push to kick the mayor off council was intense coming from his council members and few citizens. I would also add that there is only one person in this room who's still in this room that I agreed with at the time, and that's Mr. Grimm. He said, I quote, an honorable man would resign. Remember that? Absolutely. The hypocrisy is at level, uh, a high level while monitoring to remove the former mayor, this said person was in court for not paying their taxes. The removal of the former mayor seems to be for political gain. I request at this time uh, that the city taxes be released for the time they sat on council. Our former law director stated that it was legal to do so. Mr. Mayor, you are the said member of council who has paid their taxes and was found guilty. In fact, there is a judgment against you for $978.68 for not paying taxes. I would like to motion that council invoke section 4.08 of the charter for the removal of Mayor Mike Lowry for failing to pay his taxes, which is misconduct section B3 of the charter. I ask council to do the right thing. Anything else, sir? No, sir. Council. I'll second his motion. <coughs> Checking everything you need. You got the notes on that, ma'am? Or how you want to write it down? Um, what's, what's, what section was that, just four, so we make sure? 4.08 four four section B3 of the charter. Is there a mm -hmm. I would like to make a motion to table that. Second. Okay. Okay, who just so he motion Mr. to table Mr. it? Mr. Cook has got a motion to table his motion. That's correct. <clears throat> And you second it. Mr. Mayor. Sir. The motion on the table before the Mr. Cook's motion does not require a vote. At least it didn't the last time we went through this. Last time I went through this, it was a motion and a second, and that automatically kicks in whatever it kicks in. There's what no, was your there's no vote on on the motion to remove the mayor. There was a motion to remove him, but there's no vote on to remove him. And it doesn't have to require a vote because it didn't last time. <clears throat> when they tried to remove me twice, it was just a motion and a second. Okay. There was no vote on it. Um, I don't know what followed up with Yeah, I don't remember. Because there's no vote on the motion, it can't be tabled. It kicks in whatever timeline just kicked in at whatever, whatever the charges are. Right. And I don't know. I don't have it in front of me. Would you like me to, I, I opened up the. Sure. I can read this to you. Um, the proce procedure to remove a council member shall start with a motion to do so made by a council member at a regular meeting. The motion shall state the basis for removal as prescribed in section 4.08b. 
The member so charged shall be given a hearing, if requested, to hear the relevant evidence and to provide the opportunity for evidence to be presented on behalf of the member. Following such a hearing, council shall, within 30 days, vote whether to declare the member's office forfeited and vacant within five affirmative votes necessary for each declaration. Okay, so. Right. Yep, <clears throat> so that's that for now. I don't think, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a vote. I don't think, yeah, I don't think we vote today. No, you, no, you no, want no, your no, hearing. No, no, no. You have to Would request. No, I don't think I have to decide right at this moment. So, no, I mean, it's. Okay, it, I guess okay. it does, it's probably just, not, it's ambiguous, it's, yeah. Okay. As usual, it's ambiguous to what it, what was the intent, I think, but it isn't written, and. I will pass all this information on to the city manager, so course, all the proper you, steps through law and everything. Yeah, he's got it on, oh. on file. So. Okay. Um, he's probably watching right now. Could be. Any uh, questions or comments, Council, before we wrap this up? Mr. Mayor. Sir. Uh, I just have a couple of comments, and then I'll do what you want me to do. Sure. <laughs> uh, I want to thank the citizens, the administration, fire chief, uh, would be the sergeant, but the deputy, since uh, the sergeant is not here, uh, our uh, clerk of courts, fellow council members. I've uh, enjoyed my four years on council. I, uh, as everybody knows, I did not win my re-election, uh, and I will not be here in January, at least up here. Anyway, there won't be on the council. Uh, my term ends, I believe, uh, at 1159 on December 31st. And... Uh, I just wanted to thank all of you for the support and stuff that the staff has given me, council members have given me, and most importantly, the citizens out there. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I move to adjourn. I wasn't ready yet. Oh, okay. You weren't ready yet. Sorry. I withdraw my motion. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I just want to tell everybody to have a uh, safe and Merry Christmas. Don't forget the uh, New Carlisle ball drop is going to be coming up on New Year's Eve, so that's one part. I, I think it's at midnight. I'm not oh. quite sure. <laughs> But it starts at 9 o'clock. So, but the, that'll be on Main Street at Maine and Washington, and uh, it should be a good time as well. So, everyone have a very safe and uh, Merry Christmas. Anyone else? Yes, I want to thank um, Councilmember Shammy and Vice Mayor Lindsay for their service. I'm sorry you're not going to be with us next year. And, um, I hope to see uh, some of you at the party. At your house? Yeah, right. <laughs> I think that's it. Mr. Mayor. Sir. One more comment. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas in the city. Have a safe and happy uh, Christmas holiday. And please remember that Jesus Christ is the reason for this season. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I move to adjourn. Be a second. 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 <laughs>